Welcome to the first ever Anodized Chef Encore. What is an encore? Well, we decided to, uh, to do what normal people do in everyday life. We're utilizing leftovers. We're actually taking product that we used in a previous episode and we're doing something a little bit different with it to turn it into dinner. Stay with us and check it out, it's gonna be awesome. Thank you for staying with us. I'm your host, Steve Anderson. Welcome back to The Anodized Chef, where we bring heavy metal to your stovetops and to your lives. We are taking leftovers from our fridge from a prior episode, and we're showing you how to translate that into a new meal. So uh, what I've done is I've taken some, some uh, braised short ribs that we had and some mashed root vegetable and russet potatoes, and we took these out of the fridge. And we're gonna show you how to utilize, utilize that and translate that into something completely different. So uh, we're gonna actually make shepherd's pie and because dinner's already done for us, and all we're gonna do is mix it up and put it into, into a casserole dish, we're actually gonna make a dessert to go with it. So we're focusing our time on something sweet at the end where dinner's already pretty much done for us. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take, we're gonna start right into it. Uh, I've got some leftover braised short rib that I'm taking out of the pan, and we're gonna go ahead and we're just gonna bake this right out of the fridge into the pan, and we're gonna bake it in the oven. So not to worry about it being cold, because what's gonna happen is, we're going to bake this, and this is probably feed about four or five people when we're done, so not to worry. I know that's a small size, but we're gonna fill it right up so it's gonna be nice and full, and then we're gonna bake it off and then plate it up again, it's gonna be great. Um, so this gravy, now this is a le leftover gravy from that braised uh, beef episode. So we're gonna take this gravy and we're just gonna pour this right on the beef. And you can pop this in the microwave if it's really firm, you wanna skim that fat off the top. Uh, when it's in the fridge, the fat's gonna rise. And this, this gravy that we made with the braised beef from the braised beef, beef episode was absolutely phenomenal. You're not, you can't go wrong with the homemade gravy. It's, it's so, so good. So we put a little bit of that on top of the beef. Then we have some frozen corn that we had in the freezer. We're just gonna put that right in there. So as you, you know how to make traditional shepherd's pie with the ground beef. This is gonna be 10 times better because of the short rib that we put in there. Okay, so now I'm gonna put just a couple of pieces of, of butter on, on the corn. And see how we're at it, we're building a layer here. So now, we take that potato, and we put that potato right on top. Again, right out of the fridge is fine, because what's gonna happen is, when we bake this in the oven, I'm gonna have the oven preheating at this point, probably about 350 degrees, get that good and hot. And then just press this down. And remember, all this stuff is already seasoned and everything. You don't even have to do anything. It's all carryover stuff from the, from the night before or the couple nights before from dinner. So all you gotta do is just pop it right on there, press it right down, and we're gonna pop this baby right in the oven. And we're gonna switch gears and we're gonna make a salayon, which is an Italian dessert. It's like a custard almost. Let me get this in the oven and we'll talk about that. So as I was saying, zavallon is an Italian custard that's folded in with cream. It's like eating a cloud. Uh, it's a great summertime dessert because it's a nice cooler. You can put it in a champagne glass, layer it with fresh strawberries. But this time of year where it's winter, there really isn't any strawberries available. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut up a couple different kinds of winter pears and put them on skewers. That way you can take them in. So zavallon is really a year-round dessert, which is really, really good. So. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to crack six egg yolks into the double boiler. What I have is I have a pan here that's uh, three quarters of the way filled with water, simmering, and I've got a metal bowl sitting on top. And now we're going to crack the eggs. I'm going to show you an easy way to separate the yolk from the white. You split the egg in half and you roll the yolk back and forth from shell to shell and let the whites fall into a dish. And then boom, there's one yolk. And you do that six times and you'll have the six that you need. And 
I'm just going to pull this bowl off with water because I don't want to push you with right now to get a head start. All right, so we have our six egg yolks in here, and I'm using a soft French whip to whip them because they're a little bit more flexible than, say, like a stiff one, so. Um, so well, now we're gonna add our ingredients to it. Now I've got vermouth here, and I'm gonna add about a half a cup of vermouth to those egg yolks, and I'm just gonna add that right in there. And you can use Marsala wine also can be substituted. I've seen it made both ways. I prefer vermouth. But, uh, and then I'm going to add a half a cup of granulated sugar right into that as well. And now we're going to go ahead and we're going to cook this mixture right over a double boiler. Like we talked about that water in here with the stainless steel bowl. And it's almost like making a hollandaise sauce. If you've ever made a hollandaise sauce, you put the egg yolks in the stainless steel bowl and you just keep mixing like this. You just mix it right up and the egg yolk actually cooks over that heat. So we're going to keep doing this. And this is probably going to take us probably about four or five minutes. And, and if you want to just stay tuned, you'll be able to see this start to rise. It'll start to double in size. And you want to keep it moving because if you let it sit for too long, you're going to end up with sweet and cram uh, scrambled eggs. So you want to keep that motion going and keep the egg from getting... It's okay that it's froth frothing up like that. That's the actual alcohol burning out of it, which is perfectly fine. It's the gases that are in there being released. You can actually smell it too. It smells like... Uh, it smells delicious, actually. It smells like really, really sweet eggs which doesn't really sound that delicious, does it? <laughs> but uh, yeah, that frothing up like that, it's just, it's gonna start to thicken. And we're just gonna keep doing this. And you wanna keep the heat consistent. A nice, uh, medium, I would say medium heat. And that way they prevent it from, um, if it's really rolling, that egg is gonna cook before you even have a chance to move it. So you wanna keep that at a nice, medium, even heat. And we're just going to keep stirring it to keep that motion going until it really starts to thicken. You can already see it uh, size of, you know, growing in size, but it's almost double now. But we want it to really thicken up too. It's going to get real custard looking. And we'll, well, then we're going to reserve it to the side and let it come down to room temp a little bit before we fold anything into it. So. Sometimes if you feel like that water's getting too aggressive on it, you can pull it off and just kind of mix it away from the heat. Sorry, Bob. Yeah, that's almost perfect. See how I'm kind of scraping the sides? I'm going back and forth with the whisk making sure I'm covering all the surface area. And that's about the consistency we want right there. So we're gonna take it off the heat at this point, and we're gonna just set it right on the table and let it come down to room temp. Now you don't wanna, you don't wanna shock it. You don't wanna do anything too drastic to it, like put it in the fridge or anything, because you don't want it to break. You don't want the, the, uh, the oils to separate from it and have it look really nasty. It'll end up looking like curdled milk. So let's set this off to the side. And uh, what I'm gonna do at this point is while it's resting, we're gonna add just a pinch of cinnamon. And we're gonna add a little bit of a heavy pinch of lemon zest or lemon rind right to that. And then we're just gonna fold that right in. And that's just essence. We're just kind of giving that a little bit of a hint of, of both of those flavors. And you'll get that at the end. When you taste it, you'll say, oh yeah, there's a little hint of that in there. Not much, but just enough to, just enough to taste it. All right, so now we'll let that cool down a little bit and we're gonna take about a cup of heavy cream and we are going to turn it into whipped cream by adding it to this bowl here. And then I'm gonna use my, my mixer here. And we're gonna beat 
Heat this up until it's about stiff peak, which means when you take it on the end of your finger, you give it a shake, and if it doesn't fall off your finger, that's called stiff peak. That's the uh, consistency of completely whipped whipped cream. Soft peak is if you take it on your finger and you shake it, and it moves down your finger like it's about to fall off. That's soft peak. But we're going to go right to stiff peak with this. Now you don't want to over whip because you don't want it to look like butter. It, and you will churn it to the point of butter. So you've got to be very, very careful. And now let me show you what I mean. See that's stiff peak because it's not really moving. Now soft peak, if I did that, it would go, it would fall right up, you know, heading like it's gonna fall off the spoon, and that's soft peak. So we've got those two done. We've got the uh, we've got the egg mix done and we've got the cream done. And we're just gonna wait just a few more minutes for this egg to cool down because if we add that cream to that now where it's still hot, it's gonna it's gonna melt that milk right down. Like I said, it's gonna turn to, to curdled mush. So let, let that cool down a little bit more. While that's cooling down, we're gonna work on our pears. I didn't want to cut them until the very end because I didn't want to uh, I didn't want them to turn brown because they turn brown very, very quickly. So the best way to do these is right, right before serving them. So uh, I've got a combination here of red and Bartlett winter grown pears. And we're going to cut right down, and I'll show you how we're going to cut. Cut a few of them, and we'll plate them up. Throw some skewers on there, we'll be in good shape. Now we're going to cut just around the stem, just outside of where the stem is, and you should be able to contain all of the seeds. So you're going to have something square that looks like this. And then you've got all four pieces of the pear on the outside, right there, just like that. So let's cut these into wedges. Let's do the same with the red one. And there's your core. Now let's grab some skewers. And we'll go ahead and start to skewer some of these guys up. And don't be afraid to just lay the skewers on the plate as well. And let, let customers or friends or relatives do it themselves. You can do this, set this up almost like if you had a chocolate fountain or something like that. You know, I, same idea, kebab style. So now the kids can just go and dip it right in. And trust me, they will. Because every time I make this, this is one of the favorites. I got a funny story about Zabayon. When I had uh, my cholesterol test, I had made a batch of Zabayon at home. And um, because it's made with egg yolks, I had it two days in a row. And then I went to my doctor's appointment. And being a chef, the doctor said, you know, your cholesterol is a little high. I said, yeah, I know. I said, I, uh, I figured it was my lifestyle because I taste a lot of different things and whatever. But then uh, my wife reminded me. She said, you know, you ate egg yolks two days in a row and you ate you know, a good amount of it too. So and that's straight up, straight up gonna send your cholesterol off the charts. So when I went back the following year, I got congratulated by my doctor because I had dropped my cholesterol 20 points. <laughs> so. You know, then I had to come clean. I told him, I said, well, you know, my numbers last year might have been a little skewed. So, all right, so speaking of skewed, these pears look pretty well skewed. Or skewered, if you will. <laughs> all right, so now we're good now. This isn't hot anymore. It's just, it's, it's a little, little bit warm now, but we're okay. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to fold this in. Little by little. And the best way to do it is not with a French whip, but with a rubber spatula. So let's just, all I'm gonna do is I'm basically gonna turn it over. Just gonna turn it right over. And we'll put that right in there. 
scrape that all down and just turn it right over. Just like that. Pour it right into our serving dish. Now let's check on our shepherd's pie. All right, shepherd's pie is out of the oven and it looks fantastic. I've got a little bit of that extra gravy on the side that I heated up and we're gonna go ahead and just serve that with a nice couple slices of Italian bread. So for dinner tonight, honey, we're having leftovers. Oh yeah, baby. <laughs> Are you kidding me? I know I'm making a mess, but that's okay. Because that's what this dish is all about. Then we'll have some of that nice gravy right over the top. Oh man, are you kidding me? Leftovers, what? This is truly an encore because the fans are going home happy after this one. All right, our featured wine today is Coastline Cabernet Sauvignon. It's 2006. And I found that the flavors of this to be super, super bold, as opposed to the really nice um, Spanish one that we had the last time. Uh, this one has a lot more body and a lot more flavor, and I found that the, uh, the essences of everything, the pepper, the sweetness, the, the dryness, all of it were a little bit more pronounced than this one. So that's good because we've got, the, we've got the beef and the potatoes and the corn and everything all mixed together with that gravy right on there. So I thought that that kind of balanced it nice too. But, but another nice thing too is we have the sweet dessert to go with it. So it kind of offsets as well. But uh, this is a really, I found it to be really dry and full, much more body than the last one. But uh, the cab sabs tend to go really well with the beef in general. And I actually did like this with the beef a little bit more than the last one as well. I'm telling you, I told you. So um, check out our fans, fan page on, my, on our Facebook. Check out our fan page on Facebook. It's uh, facebook.com slash Chef. Follow us on Twitter. I am the Anodized Chef, or you can follow the show at Anodized Chef on Twitter. And thank you once again for joining us in our magic, madness, and mayhem. See you next time.